Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's time for the ramble. We go until midnight Eastern time out here on the uh, right coast of the United States of America. Uh, every couple of weeks, we like to check in with uh, my ex-wife, and I think we're going to do that tonight. In fact, uh, all I got to do is push a button here. And we'll be ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, out to Lake Oswego, Oregon we go, and we meet up with Ronnie Bennett from her blog, timegoesby.net. I yes. always have to remember that. And uh, uh, if she's a little out of sync, it's only because it's Skype. You know, we, we always have to say that. Uh, yeah, some, uh, and sometimes there's a glitch, and all of a sudden you're in sync. It's strange. How are you, dear? You are in sync because things are a little better, right? I, I can't see from your point of view. I have to trust what you say. Well, you, we're, we're talking about the fact that you have uh, a, uh, a little thing going with uh, 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 your uh, CT scan, which you were all worried about, of course, naturally. Mm -hmm. And it came out okay. Came out better than it was supposed to. You know, I drifted there for a moment. You're talking about my my test, my yeah. cancer test. Yeah, yeah. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. Um, I was really worried about it. Uh, and then the doctor tells me that the, uh, whatever they call them, lesions in my lung where there's cancer, um, that 50% of them are not visible. That doesn't mean they're not there, but they've shrunk a lot. And the same thing with the one in my peritoneum. Mm -hmm. And he was so pleased with how it works that now we're, we're scheduling the test every two months. He said, if the next one in two months is as good as this one, we will expand the interval in between tests to three months. Wow. So this is good news. Yeah, that's very good news. So, yes. so it won't cure my cancer, but it means I have a longer, healthier life. Well, that that's good. In other, in other words, what it's saying is the the um, um, uh, chemo is doing what it's supposed to do. Yes. Yeah, and that's good news. That's very good news. Yes. Uh, so, so where does it go from here? I guess you just. I just keep going every two weeks for chemo. Mm -hmm. I'm terribly lucky with the chemo that for all of the awful. Side potential side effects they tell me about that you know not everybody gets them all but some of them are pretty awful like oh, I can't even stand the thought of if I lost my fingernails um, that's pretty awful but the worst I've had is chemo fatigue and that's not as bad as it was the first or second time I took this chemo so um, you know I guess I was Mother Teresa in my last life I'm really really lucky wow I'm so I'm so happy. when I saw that news you published it on your blog when I saw that news I kind of went whoop de doo I was like yeah, you know, yeah me too you know <laughs> me too uh, well yeah but now you were um, let's talk about something uh, I have to tell everybody we this is the second time we've done this interview today because the last time something went wrong with the equipment. which was also what was the problem with our marriage but anyway uh, now, <laughs> Uh, no, something was wrong. I don't know. If we, we we did 25 sterling wonderful minutes, which it recorded about a minute and 44 seconds of it. And then it like froze up. Uh, and I don't know why. I have no idea. Anyway, I'm tired or now, though. She's tired or now. <laughs> but what we got into uh, the last time, and I think it, 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 we have to kind of reconstruct it here because I think it is important, was that you did a certain kind of therapy, which is, shall we say, not normal therapy. Uh, oh, it's been normal for 10 or 20 well, or 40,000 well, years. Well, but it, look, it was normal. It was normal when I was doing those things. Okay, but <laughs> that, that's not the point. The point is, is that it's still considered unorthodox, maybe. 
to a certain extent. I mean, it's. Well, it, let me tell you something. Tell about them what that. it is. What we're tell talking them. about is magic mushrooms or psilocybin. And at the end of December, I was able to have a guided trip, mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of which was to help my fear of dying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back in the 60s, when everybody was doing magic mushrooms and LSD and smoking lots of pot and stuff, that caused the government to pretty much shut down research into those drugs. Mm -hmm. And since then, very slowly, it's come back. And some very big deal research places at Johns Hopkins and at NYU and the University of California and 40 or 50 other places have been testing it with volunteers for things like P PTSD, anxiety, depression, and I think maybe even schizophrenia. And it showed remarkable results in helping people with these conditions. And in fact, using psilocybin and some other psychedelics for this kind of treatment and therapy is on the ballot for 2020 in Oregon and in Denver. And it's really becoming acceptable to the public more than half something like I think 70% in a recent survey approved the use of these psychedelics for these mm -hmm. purposes. So this is very exciting. And one of the things I've done is tell my doctors when I'm seeing them, mm -hmm. my cancer doctors, and what's I just had lunch with some friends who were telling me that they mentioned it to their physician, the, the woman, the, the wife of the couple I had had uh, lunch with, had mentioned it to her, uh, her doctor, and mm -hmm. he got very excited about it, and he knew a lot about it. He'd read Michael Pollan's book about it, and the same thing has happened with the three or four doctors at my medical center that I've told about it. They're all wildly interested in how much this could help. So I think that we're finally on the way to being able to use this kind of therapy to great good use for a lot of people. It's not just end of life that I use it for. People use it in midlife for those things that I mentioned, anxiety, depression, mm. PTSD, and other conditions. So it's very exciting that it, it because of the tests that have been done, more than 90% of the participants found that it worked for them. Mm -hmm. That's uh, That doesn't happen too much in life. Yeah, know, yeah. In uh, now, this was not cheap, right? This cost you some This bucks. is not what? This was not cheap. Uh, the, the, in, the my, in, in what I did, it was not. It, it, it will not be wildly expensive in the future. Yeah, once it's made... How can we? Is legal the word here? Well, the the point is is to make it legal at least. It, you know how marijuana in the states where it's legal first started as a medical thing and then they expanded it to mm -hmm. recreational. Yeah, I suspect this will follow the same trajectory. That mm -hmm. first it will be allowed for experimental treatment and then it will expand. Okay, now let's let's backtrack a little bit here and ask. What was your specific reason for going for the therapy? What kind of anxiety did you have? It, it just the most horrible attacks of fear about dying from the cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. I mean, it was like every cell in my body would kind of shake like this, and I, and I couldn't even think, and it would go on for two or three minutes, maybe four, before it faded away. It was just, and it would happen to me two or three times a day. Wow. And it was just, and it wasn't that I always was, that I always knew I was afraid of it. And I had looked into these kinds of drugs long before Michael Pollan's book and long before um, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I knew that if I was ever in a position in my life, like I am now, where, you know, they're telling me that, you know, this disease is going to kill me. There's nothing that can cure it. Mm. I always knew I would look to do this yeah. long, long, long before I had cancer. So I was able to. It's not easy to find somebody to be your guide, but I was terribly lucky and found somebody who could help well, me. Well, to do begin that. with, they have to have a the drug, b they have to be able to guide you. They have to be good at what they do. And yes. so, how did you when you shopped for somebody? And I'm sure you did. I'm sure you didn't take the first person that came along. What what what? what kind of questions did you have to ask and what what kind of information well, first of did you all, have you can't to just have? call up somebody nobody knows it's a schedule one drug yeah if these people are caught they go to jail okay i mean this is not fooling around stuff yeah 
So you don't just look it up on the internet you know, and call somebody. Um, it has to go through word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And that's what I had to do. And I got terribly lucky because if I still lived in New York, mm-hmm. I think I still know enough about the uh, underground drug market that I could have messed around and found somebody to do this. I don't know that where I live now. I don't know how to do that here. Mm-hmm. And I just got lucky that a friend of mine who we had never, ever, ever discussed this mm-hmm. saw a report about my cancer online. Right. Right. And sent me a very, very short email that said, are you interested? He A couple of other things. And then he said, are you interested in end-of-life psychedelics? Well, I was right in the middle of trying to figure out how I was going to find someone to do this with. And he pointed the way. And it worked out beautifully. Yeah. And uh, what, once you got a hold of the person, it was easy enough to get them to go along with you, or did you have to we go through We had an hour and a half conversation. I think she wanted to be sure she could trust me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm very sorry I just said she. And um, uh, we, as I said, we talked for a long time. We came to like each other. We talked a lot about what the experience would be, mm-hmm. what our experiences, both hers as a as a guide and me as a, I took some drugs back in the 60s. We did that together, you know. Would, and, would you be mm-hmm. revealing too much if I, if I were to, if you were to answer my question about, did this person uh, have some kind of uh, credentials? In other words, uh, being a, do- is, a, a doctor or a psychiatrist? Is, 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 is giving people a piece of paper about this. It's very widespread. There are many people doing this guidance. Mm. Um, and um, but sometimes you would find that, for instance, a psychiatrist might do this on the side. No, he wouldn't. As an example. Why not? Because he is licensed. Oh, OK. And would go to jail. Right. Well, there were there were doctors who used to give abortions uh, who were believed in it and uh, took a chance with their own licenses in the old days. That's why I'm asking. Please. Um, well, I know. don't know what you would license. The people who do this, the guides who do this have been doing it for many years. Yeah. Yeah. The person I went to has been doing it for 20 years. Right. They know a lot more than the doctors do about this. Right. Uh, and um, so uh, the, the process is you take the psilocybin. It takes how long? It took how long to, to grab hold? About 40 minutes or something like that? 30 minutes? For me, about 20 minutes. Really? Hmm? And then what was the first image you saw that you suddenly realized you were high? Uh, it was funny. We were in this beautiful room the guide has, and it looks out on the edge of a forest. And in front of the trees were very tall bushes, I'd say like up to my shoulders, but they mm-hmm. were across the way a ways, and I was looking out the window. Mm-hmm. And they started doing this, <laughs> the bushes, <laughs> which reminded me of years and years ago and some acid trips. Yes. And that, and that in was fact, first our first situation. acid trip. But our mostly, fir- it's very interior. It's not so much outside. Our first acid trips we took together. We were living out in that townhouse, and yes. and that's where we had our first acid trip. Yes. And I remember walking into the bathroom, and all of a sudden, my face started melting in front of me, and I said, "Jesus Christ! <laughs> I this didn't stuff. Have anything like this that. stuff really this was works." Much more interior experience. Well, I. I think I did magic mushrooms once. And each one of these drugs, I mean, LSD is a chemical compound, whereas uh, magic mushrooms are an organic compound, and they have different highs. And if you look at, you know what I seem to remember is I did do magic mushrooms, and or maybe I did, maybe I did mescaline. And, and what I saw was the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> and I figured... Jesus, this is where they this is where they came up with it, you know. I mean, they were high on on on, on mushrooms and and cactus, but um, so you're you're out to to mitigate your fears. Um, what did you discover, and how did you discover it? Well, you can't talk about that really. I mean, even Michael Pollan talks about this in a very very long piece online, ten or twelve pages that there are not words to talk about what an experience is. It's just, he said he felt like a jerk when you start saying, oh, I just felt like there was peace everywhere and there, peace on earth, you know? And you feel like such a jerk saying yeah, things like that. 
And, and, and you find yourself saying that over and over because there are not the words for it. Right. It just doesn't exist. And, um, it, it uh, in my case, you know, certainly there are hallucinations, not, not ever scary ones with me, but there were lots and lots of doors that went into white, empty rooms. They were all white and no furniture, just empty. Um, and then eventually I went through one, the door was ajar, and I went, you know, behind it. I went from here and the stairs around it. And it was then on that one, after I'd done that several times, that I came to see, feel, believe, I don't know what's the right word, that dying was only the other side of living and it was perfectly okay. That you can't have one without the other. Um, as with everything on earth, everything is born and lives and dies. Yeah. I mean, it, and it, it's that, an, that was okay. It's as yeah. it should be. Yeah. And I wonder sometimes if because in this country and maybe a lot of Western countries, we have hidden death away. It doesn't happen around the family anymore. And people aren't there when somebody is dying unless they're hanging out in the hospital or uh, you know some other place with someone. But we don't make it part of life the way it was for most of the history of humankind. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a great mystery. We're not allowed to talk about it. Uh, and and it makes a lot of fear. Um, and I think, particularly since this cancer came along, and particularly since the magic mushroom session, um, that the, the dying is part of living. It should be part of our lives. Mm -hmm. When I was a little kid, that was true. About half my friends when I was a kid had a grandparent living with them. Some were healthy, some were not. Right. But the kids were just as much a part of taking care, if that was necessary, of the grandparent as the parents were. And we mostly don't do that. We don't have our grandparents in our homes anymore. We don't see old people as they get older and what happens to them. Yeah. That all happens in secret now. Yeah. So we don't know very much about dying anymore. So you went through this experience, uh, and, and uh, by the way, when you see these doors and so on, were your eyes open? Were you close? Were they closed? No, they were closed. They were closed. So you were you were uh, dreaming a lot of Don't this. Don't try to be too specific about no, it. It's well, not talkable well, about that way. I'm curious. What can no, I no, say? no. It's not yeah. about curiosity. I'm telling you that those questions can't be answered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody once said to me, I mean, about marijuana, just something as simple as marijuana, uh, can you describe your mar a marijuana high? And it's very hard to describe. You, you, can, you can use all kinds of words like, well, you're a little all of this and that, and you, but you can't really describe the feeling. Well, but, except that you're really yeah. slow and you eat a lot of candy. No, well, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so the the question I have here is now you're through with this, and it lasted how long? How long did the session last? I guess about five hours. About five hours, and um, uh, you you come back home, and now has that fear kind of mitigated itself, complete or, or you mean completely as, as or I partial? lost it? Have you lost it, or no. do you you still live with the fear, but you understand it? No, I just don't feel very afraid of it. I see. Okay. So what this did is help you deal with the fear. And that was the point. Yeah. I mean, and what we did, you know, I arrived at the guide's house the night before we were going to do that and we had dinner mm -hmm. and it was explained to me how what would happen and how we would do this and mm -hmm. and uh what, and I was asked to talk about what my goal was, which was to deal with fear of dying. Mhm. Mm uh, I think I also added in, hey, you know, if you could throw that in, I'd like to know what the meaning of life is. <laughs> yeah, if you could just get a little extra bonus, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so we had breakfast the next morning, and uh, and she measured out the mushrooms, and uh, you know, a certain <clears throat> a certain amount depending on my weight, and <clears throat> excuse me, and um, and we did that. Yeah. And uh, and then we. The next morning, I stayed another night, mm -hmm. and the next morning we talked about uh, living with it and what it should what, mean what, to my life. You know, I have a paralyzing fear of death. It always, I always have, um, and ever since I was a kid. Uh, and now that I get closer <laughs> to that point, I'm even more depressed by it. 
could if if this became legal for medicinal purposes, okay? Could you see this as a, just for somebody like myself who's not dying, but who wants to deal with course, the latter of part of my life? It's not about dying. I mean, most people, midlife, it's not that they have a disease that's going to kill them. Mm -hmm. They have issues, whether it's anxiety, depression, PTSD, some other conditions yeah. that they want to explore and try to help themselves with. Um, it uh, and it seems to work dramatically, as I told you about the the research that's being done. Yeah. Um, and uh, and one of the reasons that I've read about it being used on people like me who are old and and facing dying, right, is that you know that that these research hospitals have to get permission from the FDA to use this to do research with because mm -hmm. it's a Schedule One drug. Right. And one of the ways that they are been able to get those permissions, I think, from what I've read, is that they tell the politicians and the people that are all scared that we might have a little fun, you know, with this, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm having a, a chemo brain moment. <laughs> uh, and, um, is that if they tell these people that can give permissions, um, that we're going to do this with these old people because of their fear of dying, it's easier for politicians or administrators who make these decisions to say, oh, well, they're old anyway. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> 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 and, and that's a foot in the door for other people and, yeah. and moving the uh, the idea forward that we actually um, you know, can treat people with these psychedelic drugs that, um, people have ignored for too long, and and for, I mean, for for centuries before us, people have used these well, drugs I, to good I, effect. I, I always felt that LSD got a bad shake because well, not of, just all of all of the yeah, psychedelics. Because I think there were definite legitimate uses for LSD, and well, and I think a lot of Americans do because of that survey that I saw that way yeah. over half um, approved the use of how it was used for me and how. The researchers wish to use it. Listen, before we get to the end of this, I've got to ask you a question, okay? Yeah, sure. Renee Collins. Do you know Renee Collins? Of course I know Renee Collins. She's a regular caller to my uh, my podcast, but she hasn't called me in about, oh, about a month and a half or so. Uh, and uh, it usually happens around this time of the year. So I wrote her, and I said that I was wondering if she was okay and so on. And she wrote back, and she said, yeah, I'm okay, but it's that time of the year. My husband died this time of the year, and I kind of go into hibernation. And, you know, it was a very nice letter back. And then at the end, she said, uh, could you give me Ronnie's address? I'd like to send her a pineapple. Well, apparently she did more than a pineapple, right? Uh, well, see, I got this box yesterday that went, that weighed almost nothing yeah. with this little envelope mm -hmm. with a card in it. Mm-hmm. For a gift certificate to Whole Foods. Whole Foods. From her. Right. From her. Isn't that nice? That's, uh, you know, who knows? No Maybe. pineapple, just what, unless they have them for sale at Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's, but, she, she, but she sent me a note and said that if I wanted a pineapple, let her know. Yeah. <laughs> she's very nice. No, well, she, uh, she uh, lives in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, she. That's where the pineapple stuff comes Yeah, from, and, okay. I, and when she asked for your address, sometimes I'm. I'm a little reticent to give out addresses and so on. But in, in this case, I thought it would be a very nice thing because she's a very nice lady. And so, you know her, so that's okay. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. She, in fact, when I was inducted into the uh, Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame, she came to my induction. Oh, that's nice. You know, that's nice. And I didn't even know her at the time. I think I had met her maybe the first time there. So she's been a fan for years. And she said she was watching your stuff, and you know she she's really been taken back by by this. And I I told you this when we recorded earlier. I'm going to say it again. I think what you're doing is very very important. Not for it, it's th probably therapeutic on some level for you, but I think it's very helpful to people who are in the same situation. Although as you have said, everybody's mileage may vary. Yes. But certainly hearing somebody talk about it can make them feel better about it and about the trip they're taking, you know? Well, one of the things that I ran into when I was first diagnosed and thinking about what was I going to say on the blog or not say and 
what this was all about mm -hmm. um, is that um, most of what is written for people who have medical death sentences, maybe we mm -hmm. could call them, you know, mm -hmm. um, is it's mostly written from caregivers' point of view. 95% of it that's any good that I could find was from caregivers' point of view. And they talk about taking care of the of the patient as though they're a little kid in a lot of ways and can't make their own mm -hmm. decisions. Now, certainly there are people that you know have problems that they can't make decisions for themselves, but most of us can. And yeah. nobody has much written about it from the patient's point of view of what you go right. through, what your doubts are, what you're scared of, what you is okay, how you come to live with this. Mm -hmm. and, um, and all the stuff that comes up, and the silly little things too. I mean, I, I just mentioned chemo brain. Right after chemo, every two weeks, you know, for two or three days, it's like right now talking to you that there's some fuzzy cloud between me and the screen. So, <laughs> you know, my brain just isn't as functional as yeah. it will be in another day or two again. Um, and what's that? What that's like? I can, if I'm trying to write something, I, if I concentrate during chemo brain. I can do it if I really concentrate hard. What I can't do mm -hmm. is follow instructions very well. Like if I were trying to do a recipe, yeah, and it said, you know, two thirds cup of sugar, and the next thing it said a teaspoon of salt. If I walked away to get those things, I would forget what I was looking for. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't work very that well. That happens to me, and I'm not even on chemo. So you know, and me. <laughs> it, that happens to me, and I'm not even on chemo. <laughs> Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time, but I want to remind people that you can be found at uh, timegoesby.net, and uh, hopefully uh, we can hear from you again in another couple of weeks and discuss more. This has been great, and I hope it recorded this time. I do, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Thanks, Ronnie. You're welcome. Thank you. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap. The Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are, and uh, off we go into the wild blue yonder of the uh, of the ramble. Uh, uh, that's Ronnie, and we'll talk with her again in a couple of weeks. And it's so good to hear that you know things are better. My microphone. See it move? When I move it. It makes that sound. I I I bought this thing, but it doesn't. I I used to keep like tissue paper under it so it wouldn't make noise. And I think maybe I will have to do that again. See, I take uh, I take this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me let me. By the way, let me uh, let me open up the Skype line so people will be able to call, and you can you can see how I do wonderful pieces of magic here to make things work. You just take some paper and you double it over. See, and I put it under the under the leg, under the foot of this thing. Then I take another one, and I uh, double it over a couple of times there, and put it under there. And then um, I take another one, and I bet this isn't going to work. <laughs> I'm going to look like an asshole. And then, then I will uh, put this under here, like that. And uh, this is, it's, it's quieter. It's quieter. Let me see here. Let me just... Uh, do this over a couple of times there on that one because that one was too thin and there now i can move it around if i move it around a little bit you're not going to hear the same kind of noise anyway we're waiting for people to call that's what happens on this program we just wait for people to call uh and and sometimes they do and uh, sometimes uh they don't uh so uh most of the time they call though and I'm now I'm waiting for like you know who's going to be the first tonight. Uh, you know what? I had these I have these um, these earphones that have foam on them, right? That stick in your ear, and I like those because they uh, they you know they work really well uh, in in closing off the ear, right? And that what, what happens is they you squeeze them and then you put them in your ear and then the foam expands and, and makes a seal in your ear. But for some reason, this ear over here is having trouble holding it. And I went and just got some new new stuff and it's still not working. 
Well, anyway, here comes Charles Wallace, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, and here comes Phil Meyer as well. Uh, there we go. There's the both of them. Uh, here, here comes uh, there. They see, they see, they pop in like that. And uh, there's Charles Wallace. Um, yep. Okay, we got the two of you already. Oh, well, that's off to a good start tonight. We're not I never can beat Phil in. We're not. <laughs> we're not going to hear from Jeff Stein. Actually, you were first, Charles, tonight. You really oh. were, but you were you didn't pop in as fast as his did. So, you know. Well, uh, for your microphone dilemma. Yeah. Uh, why don't you get one of these? Well, I don't want one of those. Well, it would stop it from bouncing. Uh, well, it would. I, I. It wouldn't stop it from bouncing. The only problem I have, you see, is when I move it back and forth like that. The reason I, I can't do it. it I just, you, if you saw the the setup here, you would see why I couldn't put one of those in. You know, and then they would come in the way of my. Uh, you know, yeah. I've, I've got. I may find some other stand for this, but you know, this is. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, not a problem. I have something I'll send you. Uh, it's a uh, small Persian rug uh, about the size of a mouse pad. And uh, you put it on, put the stand on that. And would you know he'd be sending me a rug? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just something you cut off another rug, right? No, no, no. Let me... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that would be nice. if It doesn't take up too much room here. That's the other problem. See, I have a, I have space c considerations here, and it causes a uh, it causes a major problem for me. Yes, Phil, here we go. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, but I think it's too big. I don't know if it would fit here right. Actually, I could probably put it. Yeah, I could. Well, yeah. It, well, yeah. Well, I yeah. But I don't know how big your head is. <laughs> so I can't tell by using that comparison. But oh, um, okay. Uh, iPhone, yeah, and rug. Well, iPhone and rug. Yeah, I, you know, I, I probably could somehow fit it somewhere here. You know, Just but it, it, the stand. hey, send it to me. What the hell? You know, you got nothing. All right. You know, all you have to do during the day is work. Uh, you know. So how are you doing, Charles? I'm doing pretty good. He's become a regular. Uh, what I love about this is you become a regular again. Oh yeah. Yeah. Boy, I hope you don't meet another woman. <laughs> I don't think there's much danger of that. <laughs> mm. well, well, yes. Well, I mean, I still, you know, I don't know. Do you have the small iPhone or a large iPhone? <laughs> I have the small one. <laughs> the, the iPhone 10. Uh, the, right, the, the original one. In case you're listening to us on just the audio only, folks, what he's doing is he's constantly um, um, uh, holding up various objects like his head and whatever to show me uh what's gonna you know what's gonna work and not work so you know whatever uh but uh anyway so um let me see here oh here comes uh, oh here comes rob oh good i always love to have rob on the show hello hello rob how are you good how are you yeah another how's it go, how's it, go? It, it, it it did you just were you echoing say something rob what? Say something. Some huh? For some reason, my headset isn't working. Let me check out why. Have a nasally sound. Yeah, well, I think, well, probably because oh. he's got it. You've got what? Well, you're doing this with a uh, laptop, right? And so yeah. he's probably using the camera and the mic, the phone and the laptop is what's coming through. So. Yeah, for some reason, uh, this is the first time this has ever happened. Let me try a different mic mm. board. Oh, they're crackling? Mm. Uh, you're in and out. Uh, yeah, how about now? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Ah, that's better. There yeah. we go. Yeah, the we... USB port on the uh, on the right side of the computer wasn't working. That's uh, weird. Yeah, are you that happy with audio delivery through USB? Oh, I never think about it. I'm not doing anything that high quality with it. Yeah, because this is how I'm doing it now. I, I and I've had to get used to a whole new dynamic. Uh, oh, with the new board. Yeah, well, with, no, with the new board, it has a USB out, and the USB out goes into the Mac Pro, which doesn't have a line in anymore. They don't put line ins anymore on uh, on Macs. 
Uh, and so you have to do it through a USB port. And, and before I was using some little dongle that I bought, and that was okay, but it, it, it had a, a series of problems. Uh, but the, this thing seems to be just fine. But there's no way of regulating the amount of sound that's going into the, into the uh, uh, what do you computer. call it? Into the computer. That's because it's ones and zeros. Right. I have to, uh, in each program, just, you know, set the levels on it. And some of them you can't set levels on. But it, it, it for some reason, it never overmodulates. So, you know. Because it's, again, because it's being transduced into ones and zeros. Yeah. Yeah, and and it it's not an analog signal in the way we're used to. Yeah, you, I remember how complicated our lives used to get, and now it's all simplified down to ones and zeros in just about everything we do. You know, people yeah. don't if you don't understand what we're talking about, folks, is that basically digital is just a series of ones and zeros, and it's the combination of the ones and zeros that creates a pattern that makes whatever happen happen. So turns the sound that's on turns things off. Yeah, turns things. It's like a light, a light, many millions of light switches being turned on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. So, uh, uh, why, 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 why do they call it ones and zeros? Why do they just call it negatives and positives? They used to call it new math because it's and I didn't the, get that either. <laughs> because it's the uh, what is it called? The uh, the eight bit. Um, it's one, one and zero are the only, what is that called? I mean, I, I learned it back 35 years ago, 40 years ago in college yeah. when I took computers, the, the base computer language is, uh, binary, code, uh, binary. Yeah. And it's one and zero. That's why those are, it's on or off. That's the, uh, mm -hmm. the, if you can do a binary, it's eight, it's eight, uh, positions. And it's either one zero, and you know each of the eight positions is going to be one 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 zero 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 zero. You know, and that's what makes up but computer language. If you so have sixteen a sixteen bit system, it's better than an eight bit system because you have more infinite combinations, <clears throat> right? Well, you're well over my because there was no sixteen bit systems when I took that class. Yeah, so but I think I think most go up. I, I have no idea. I, are they sixteen bit today or thirty two bit? I think. Uh, yeah, sixty-four. I think it's sixty-four. Sixty-four. I still think it breaks down to the eight-bit system yeah. in the end. I Let, think, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, 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 the Einstein show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, uh, anyway, um, yeah. I, you know, I, uh, I, I it, the technology that all of this entails i'm i used to be so good with rob i used to be just terrific with it and as each new thing starts to come out i don't get it as much as i used to in the old days i would just absorb all this stuff you know yeah and agree. now it just gets to be i mean i look at an instruction i'm i look at this board i've got here okay and I, yeah, I know I've got uh, audio going into this pot, and I got audio going into that pot. The volume switches, folks. And I, I've got a place here for to listen to my earphones, and um, uh, uh, there's a place for my microphone and Marjorie's microphone. But then there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I can't figure out what the fuck it does. Like That's the stuff I don't touch. It says S T W S T. RTNs. I assume that means stereo return, and it's yeah. a it's a volume slider. Now, right. and up above, I have a thing that says ST uh, input. I guess. All right. So now you know why it is that I want to go out and buy a radio board. <laughs> because you, you would have learned this is not new technology, but this is the difference between working at a radio station and working in a recording studio. Yes. Right. But, so, but, or it, television, where you do, uh, you know, you're sending audio out to different places, and I never, you know, I, I'm not comfortable with that stuff. Like I have a stereo, I have a stereo graphic equalizer on the board, and I have no idea how to get it to work. I I've tried everything, R and it doesn't. RTFM. Huh? RTFM. Could what? you translate that, please, Rob? RTFM. 
Yeah. Read the fucking manual. No, but I read the manual, and it says, uh, yeah, this is the stereographic equalizer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, what, how, is, what is... Uh, you? What how do I get this equalizer? mic to be affected by that equalizer? How do I get the output of this board affected by that equalizer? Well, you, have, you have to push that button that makes well, it live, and then you can make the adjustments. Well, I, have, I have it in the main mix position. And in the uh, equalizer in position. All right. Okay. And are you getting uh, a bunch of pots that you can see that you can adjust for the different levels of frequency? No. So, you know, the, the mids, the highs, the lows. Oh, yeah, that I can do. Well, that's the graphic equalizer. No, but the, I have a graphic equalizer with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slider switches. And if they're and in the that, middle, hmm? that's that. All that is is uh, if you adjust those, it'll adjust your tone. Here's what no, I but would it, suggest. It, it, no, I've tried it. Look, I can here's, I can change this all I want. I'll, I'll put them all high. Okay. Oh, no, okay. Nothing's changed. No, it didn't. we hear it. Yeah, we hear it. Oh, you hear it. Oh, I see. yeah, big difference. So here's your problem. You're not listening to the right return. Yeah, you don't have a solo. I think on that. You're not listening to in your your monitors or in your earphones. You're not listening to the right return because when you did that, mm -hmm. it really changed yeah. everything. Oh yeah. Uh -oh. What you're feeding, what you're feeding to air is not. It's like you're not listening to the air chain. No. Oh, yeah, okay. So there's got to be that's a solo problem. or something that's, that's that you can push. So when I change but something here, like when I, cha I would when I change something like this, does my sound change now when I did that? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. it does. Okay. So how do I hear it? Uh, oh, that's it, the problem. Here's it, what I would recommend, mm -hmm. and this is what I do when I buy a piece of equipment. I go to YouTube, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. Google on YouTube. I search for the product name, like Mackie, mm -hmm. whatever the model number is. Yeah. And then there'll be any number of people who will show you how to set it up, how to use it, and there's all kinds of information about that device there. Don't yeah. watch the unboxing. There's so many unboxings. People go, oh, I just got this new mixer. Here's the box. Yeah. I open the box. Inside the box, here's the mixer. Here are the here's cables. The foam. <laughs> yeah, and it's like ridiculous. But if you'll find. Yeah, and then they get, you know, those, those guys get like a half a million hits. Yeah. And, oh, and, and I'm sitting here trying to get 200 people to listen to me. You know, I mean, I may as well just like open a box or unzip my pants or something, you know. <laughs> but I, that's what I would do. I, 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 uh, I did that with, with the mixer I have. But quite frankly, I'm still comfortable with production or program mm -hmm. and audition. And um, you know what I think? Alex, you know what I think? Alex? I think the, the uh, reason for it is is that I have you guys uh, on my main output. In other words, the audio for the uh, for the video uh, that I'm recording, and the you know the YouTube live and all of that, and your Skype is all coming off of a main uh, main output. Apparently, maybe the USB output doesn't have this sound. It doesn't do the sound. So I'll tell you what. You whatever you did, you're you're sounding distorted now. I'm sounding now, distorted. Now, Alex, last night oh, you Lord. used your reverb. Let me and turn I this off. said something. Am I okay now? Am I better now? Uh, it's a little tinny, but... Uh, oh, a little bit. It doesn't sound right. A um, little bit? How, how's it now? That's better. Better? That's better. Oh, yeah, it's because I've got, uh, I've got your output too high is what I've okay, got. Okay, so last night you uh, put your reverb on, and I said you said something, and I said something while the reverb was on, and what I said came out on your reverb. Uh, yeah. That, uh, it's because you're running it into the same things uh can, can you, know. you hear the reverb now yeah yeah yes i can mm -hmm. and uh but i'm not hearing my voice coming through your reverb at the moment hmm. it is it is it is yeah. okay well uh yeah okay so wait a minute let me let me let me turn uh, uh something down a little bit here on my uh, skype so that i go to the tools come on go to audio settings uh i'll bring it down just a bit is it better now is it yeah, okay fine. now Huh? Back to normal. What, what I would suggest is look at your watch, figure out how far into the show you are, mm -hmm. and then yeah, uh, no. later yeah. listen to the no. recording uh, when you yeah. changed your graphic equalizer okay. settings. Yeah. Is my so audio you, okay now? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's fine now. Okay, it's perfect. No distortion yeah. or anything like no. that. Okay, no. fine. 
what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're feeding well and and you probably will feed i mean what you're feeding air is like what you're feeding to that you're recording right now and that you're feeding live is it the same feed as to what you got in your earbuds yeah and yeah. is it the same feed that what we're fe- what you're feeding skype hmm. this is why i don't like any of this equipment because I yeah. can't figure any of that crap out. But basically, my basically my audio sounds fine now. Yeah, right now your audio sounds fine. Okay, good. Here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it might it might have been a little distorted because I might have had it on a little bit. On, I've turned it down just a tad on the uh, uh, on Skype. Uh, well, and it, it's it's perfect now. It's perfect. Okay. Well, that's all that matters then. You know, but I think that it has something to do with it. I can't hear the main output. So somewhere here, I'm, I could probably plug a pair of earphones in and hear the main output. You know, so. uh, but you should be able to hear it through your earbuds. No, but I don't. I don't. Yeah, well, what, there, are you, what are you feeding? Or what are you feeding your earbuds from? The, the uh, air, I'm, I'm the plugged. I'm, I'm plugged into the uh, uh, the phone or the earphone plug. It says phones. Yeah, I'm plugged okay, in so phones. It's the, it's the it's the studio monitor. Uh huh. It's not the uh, it's not the the final mix monitor. Is that it? I don't know because on mine I have a monitor and I have a phone. Uh, See, pod. all I'm saying is, I'm getting too old for this shit. You know, and you're right. I, it would be nice to have just a nice radio board here, That's, but that would take up too much room. Ah, uh, you should see the small ones they got now. Oh, really? Oh, they got some really nice ones. But yeah. you know what would happen is that you'd have to flip the switch or press a press a switch uh, when you want to talk. Uh, otherwise, you'd be muted, right? What do you mean? Uh, don't those radio boards uh, have so, it set up to where uh, you you key the mic? Yeah. yeah so what? You, you turn it you on. You it turn open. it off. Yeah. You just oh, like. Well, what do I do here? I slide mine up and I slide mine down, or I can right. just cut it in and out if I want to. So yeah. how's that different? Oh, well, uh, I, don't know. I think a radio board gives you uh, more flexibility not to uh, Well, it's, have... it's simpler. It does yeah. the... easier. Yeah, much yeah. easier. Much easier. Uh, and and uh, what I would love to do, I wonder, you know, uh, and I know I have a friend who has uh, one of these. Um, uh, the, uh, a lot of the control boards we used in the old days. The, who who was the main maker of control boards? McMartin. No. Who's oh, Mc, that's who I used to use. Who's McMartin? I never heard of McMartin. Uh, it's, uh, it was an eight pot board. It's what we used at our station. Yeah. Uh, Mc, yeah. McMartin was an yeah. uh, analog board. The main person, the group who made control boards for radio stations was Gates. Uh, wow, yeah. that's a long. Uh, that's time a long ago. time ago. And what he has. The best board they made was a thing called the Gates Yard, and it's exactly a yard wide, yard you know wide, and has all the pots there and the you know view meter rotary? and all that, huh? Ro- rotary pots or slide? Rotary pots, pots yeah. Oh yeah. And and you could in the center. The problem in, with those boards, yeah. The, the problem with those boards is they would be difficult because you're using unbalanced inputs in your studio. You need balanced. You need balanced. You know, there was nothing the, difficult. You just turn them up, and if if it was if you're paying the meter, you turned them down. You know. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, like you, you can't with the with those old Gates boards. Hmm. You can't plug in your typical RCA jacks into it. Everything is balanced oh. inputs. Well, you, you use Canon connectors. You got to use Canon connectors. Well, that's what I use. That's what I use in here. In this board, but all your equipment that you're connecting, how do you connect the computer up to it? How oh, do you connect oh, your oh, audio? Oh no, that's system? different. I put those okay. into uh, into line inputs. Right, but you don't have that on an old Gates board. Uh, right, right. So that's the problem with those. I mean, I have a friend who were I went to college with. He was the chief engineer at my college radio station and spent thirty odd years at ABC. As Although, a, what as do they do? Engineer. What do they do with uh, turntables, for instance? How, how are well, they hooked in? Preamps. One of the pots. They have preamps. You need, you need preamps. So you wire the turntable to the preamp, and then there's a balanced input into the the, right. uh, the pot right. for the, the turntable. Right. So I have a friend who's got one of those big Gates boards yeah. with the rotary pots at his house. He sent me a photo of it. I would, I'm would i jealous as all get out, but the problem with it is it's you know, you have to be an engineer to be able to work on a board like that. 
Yeah, I, 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 the other problem, well, the thing was that uh, it was a, uh, uh, Walter Sabo who owned this Gates Yard. I don't know if he still owns it. But uh, when I saw that board, it was just brought back memories because the hours I spent sitting in front of one of those things was incredible. And in each of the pots in the center, they had these discs they sent with it where you could just glue these discs into it so that you'd have a pot that were red and those were maybe the, uh, the, 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 the microphones. And then you have pots that were yellow and those were like the turntables. And then the tape machine might be green. You're right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I worked on a board like that. Yeah. And, and I spent many a year um, in front of boards like that. Yeah. Yeah. With, a, with reel-to-reel tape machines. <laughs> and uh, the early cart machines. This what? looks interesting. It's called a stutter, a studer. Uh, yeah, and it's an on-air uh, digital uh, mixing console. Yeah, well, fuck that. We want the old analog. All right, I, uh, <laughs> let me go back. We so, want to go to so analog. There are some really good, very compelling boards that cost about 1600 bucks, and they're radio boards. And they have VU meters and everything. And they even have, if you wanted it, they they have USB versions. They've got um, uh, they've got Bluetooth versions. They have versions that come with built-in um, for the phone. The phone, um, what do you call that? Coupler. Uh, the well, there's a name for it. I can't think of it right now. I have a head cold. Uh, but these boards, they're brand new, and you could buy them at uh, BS. Uh, what is it? BSW? Is that the name of the? broadcasts uh can't think of the name of the company right now but i've been looking at these boards and i keep i keep drooling thinking this is going to be the answer to me having a studio that i understand the whole thing rather than i don't know where returns and mix effects and all this other crap that i just have no clue about because i never took a recording cost of course yeah well i, I mean I, about recording yeah you know i mean phil sent me his old board his old behringer which i can't use because there's it, it, there's no room I mean, for it there's give the it same to exact somebody board if you don't I want have. huh the exact it, same board i have the big one yep that's the one i have isn't that too much board well you know what for me because I like to do music and it's not enough it's not enough line inputs for me. I oh. need more line inputs. There's too many uh, there are a lot of inputs on there, but mm -hmm. only like four of them are line inputs. Everything else is a mic input. Well any one of the mic inputs on this Mackie right below it are line inputs. You can use either the line inputs behind, or you can use the microphone the inputs. Behind it uh, you have Oh line I looked in back of it every... last night. That thing But they're not stereo. Oh, a few of them are. Two. Yeah, just four. Well, on the Behringer board, only four of them are. All I'm saying was, Phil, what did you need that yeah. board for? Well, you know, were you going to record bands? No, <laughs> I, I looked on the for. internet and it said that this was a good board and I bought it used. And uh, then when the pot started getting scratchy and uh, uh, one of them, one of the channels stopped working. I think it was channel one, mm. uh, but it, then it started working again. Um, and I I'm said, starting well, to have trouble with my. Yeah, I'm I mean, just going to get another I mean, one. I mean, eventually, I'm just going to hook that thing up and and uh, uh, play with it and and clean it up and so on. Yeah. You know, but whatever. Enjoy anyway, it. It, it, yeah. Uh, I mean, I love this new Mackie I bought. It's terrific. But you say my voice is not distorted now, and it's all fine. Yeah. No. Okay, that had something to do with uh, had something to do with the the uh, the main out which I have driving both the audio for YouTube. And uh, do I sound good out there? Do I sound fine? Uh, it says uh, it sounds fine on YouTube, according to Kevin Stopper. Kevin, thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, uh, okay, good. Just, I just want to make sure. I Because this is all, you know, I just put this board in the other day, and it went in pretty easy, you know, so I had no, no major problems with it. Uh, and uh, my other board, the volume sl sliders were getting noisy, hinky. No, not noisy. They were you do a you'd slide down and it would break up. So I had to keep spraying it. Uh, but the spray, you know, would only work for a short amount of time. And then right, yeah. they gone bad. You see, in the old days, folks, when we had bad pots on a board because they would get scratchy, you used a thing called carbon tectochloride. 
and you would just clean the pots internally with the carbon tetrachloride and then smooth the sound out and it was good to go for for months and months and months you know you know what i Both found out today? are serviceable not he, like today you know what i found out today and i didn't realize this and and i'm glad and i've have, i'm very calm about it because i bought a tv set uh, I bought a very cheap TV set. I bought a TCL Roku. And it, it really, it's a 4K and it looks great. And, you know, we needed it for the living room, which we don't spend a lot of time in watching TV. So, um, because the other one broke. And um, so we bought this thing. And it's really, for it was $365. And it's fine. It's a great great 4k and you know all of that and it has the built-in roku so anyway i of course worried about what happens if it breaks and so we uh, we we went and got a i think it's a five-year warranty for service all right it was costco. it was 35 dollars at costco right because yeah. it's always based on the cost of the set and the set was so goddamn cheap it was 35 hmm. bucks okay so I, but I went, gee, what happens now if this thing, let's say I just bought it and it breaks and what do I do? I mean, how do I pack this thing up again and haul it down to Costco and get it fixed or return it? And then I looked at the warranty. The warranty is for people to come out to your house and fix it. Wow. Wow. They, they don't, they do most television repairs now in home, not you don't have to take them into a, a shop somewhere. And the reason is, is because people, these things are so big and huge that nobody really wants to haul them anywhere to get them fixed. So they come to you. So really, the idea of house calls is now the purview of people who fix television sets. Like the old days. Remember the guy used to come with the... With the uh... The tubes, the tubes and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he'd yeah. be sitting there hoping he could fix it in the house. Half the time, he'd have to grab all the guts it, out and leave you with he, just the He came with this, with this, yeah. with and this. And we'd go back there and play like we were on TV. He became, <laughs> came with this big, heavy thing, uh, luggage kind of thing. And he opened it yeah. up, and there were all the tubes. And he would. And all his testing gear. And he would look in the back of your TV sets, had tubes, folks. Uh, in, in the eighties, I had a. Well, wait a minute, but you wait a minute, RCA. but no, but you, you, he would look in the back, and he would look to see which ones didn't light up, and those were the ones he would replace. Yeah, what were you going to well, say, Phil? I, I had a thirty-two inch RCA, yeah, and it was so heavy it took four people yeah. to lift it up, and yeah. uh, it, it was it was a behemoth, and what happened was I moved and. Uh, uh, the TV went on its side or face, and a board cracked. And it cost me five hundred dollars to have a guy come out and change the board. But this thing was so heavy you couldn't move it. Um, uh, Shecky uh, had, uh, up until about a couple of years ago, a thirty-six inch Sony. Yeah. You want to talk about heavy? Oh, <laughs> this wait, wait a minute. It was a Sony. It's a Trinitron. Yeah, Sony Trinitron. Yeah, uh, it was either th it was either thirty six or thirty. Well, you know, you know what's heavy? heavy. I'll tell you. You, you change, talk about change in weight. We have a TV set here that Marjorie bought when I first knew her. It's Panasonic, and it was a thirty. It was a twenty. It was a uh, uh, how many inches was it? It was I think it was a forty five inch screen, and it was and that was an expensive it, TV, it, probably it, fifteen uh, years three, ago. Uh, 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 three three thousand dollars she paid for it. Right. And I wondered why she was paying so much for that. But anyway, this thing's sitting out there, and it's fucking heavy, okay? Yeah. So then I get the the uh, the old set, the LG we bought a few years ago, the 3D that blew on us, which I understand from the guy. He said, you could probably have somebody come in and open it up, and they'll probably find that it's a condenser that's blown or a capacitor that's blown. Yeah. And, and just replace the capacitor. And I might have them do it because it's a 3D set. And even if I never use it again, I could sell it because there are a lot of people out there who can't get lay their hands on 3D TV sets anymore. And they're supposedly going up in price rather than down in price. But anyway, um, uh, so that was really heavy. The one we took down last night, the LG was heavy, but the new one we put up, so it was half the weight. They're, they're mm -hmm. now just, you know, 
I mean, they're, they're, they're really very light now uh, compared yeah. to what they were. So, you know. And in the days of plasma TVs, they, they were pretty heavy. Well, they also, the reason why I think they made them lighter is, is, is and wanted to make them lighter is because the shipping is cheaper for them. When they yeah. have to ship, you know, a bunch of them, plus the amount of space they take up in a truck and whatever, you know, you can probably put in, in the place that used to put 100, you could probably put another 10 in there and ship it cheaper because it's probably a quarter of the weight of the old stuff. So Sure, and also the brackets that you had to use to put them on a wall uh, were uh, much larger than... Uh, well, there uh, I saw one uh, set a while back where actually it had you could you could literally hang it like a picture on a wall it had wow. you know uh wow, that light mm -hmm. huh oh was it the fabric looking one no no it's got the it had a uh, it had like uh, little knobs on either side and then you could take the uh, this wire and you put it between them and you hang it on the wall wow you know uh, they, just like a picture yeah yeah so yeah but uh, so that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, another tech talk. It's better than medical talk, which we could get into, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Somebody wrote me, I think it was Tony, and said that he saw on Mike Allen's thing that a woman said that he had a stroke and that he was incapacitated. But, uh, you know, I don't well, know. Well, wait a minute. I can, I can go look. Uh, you mean on his Facebook page? On the Mike Allen Facebook page, yeah, but let's uh, see here. Somebody uh, wrote. I, I think it's the, maybe the last thing, and I, I wrote them back and said this is what I heard. Let me uh, see here. Okay, Mike Allen. Here we go. Um, hi, Mike. Hope you're doing well. That's the last one that's there. We well, yeah, have, but there's three uh, or four uh, comments uh, under it. Oh yeah, there hasn't been online. Uh, 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 well, let me see here. In case people are not aware of the story, because maybe you weren't listening last night, there is a guy who calls um, um, Jack, uh, Jack, uh, Jack Bishop on his program, The Intersection, which goes on right after us. And he was on every night. Come rain or come shine. This guy was, you know, that was he his. Was worse than me. Huh? He was worse than me. <laughs> Nobody's worse than you, Phil. <laughs> But for some oh, yeah. re for some reason, I like you. I don't know what it is. It's it's a part of me that's really sick. But anyway, let's see here. It says uh, he hasn't been online, hasn't answered his phone. Some lady answered, then hung up immediately after I asked for him. No one, no, no, the number no longer works. If anyone can please send the police to conduct a welfare check. That's what you did, Phil. All right. Yeah. As I'm worried about him. Then Linda Peacock writes, Hi, Mike. Sorry, you haven't gotten in touch with him. He had heart surgery over a year ago, and then he had a stroke on his right side a few months ago. Uh, really? Well, uh, uh, why uh, didn't we know about that? Ago. And he is in a rehab now, and it's going to be a while before he gets out. And then there's a phone number for you to call her. Uh, her. If you like, thank you for asking about him. Wow. Mm. Um, okay. That's interesting. Uh, so what, what she's saying is he's had a stroke and he's in rehab now and it's going to be a while before he gets out. But you'd think maybe he would call or get a hold of... Maybe he can't of speak. That's, that's why Jeff would have been good to describe what goes on uh, when you have a stroke. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, because Jeff had had a major stroke, and yeah, had to relearn how to how to talk. I think. Yeah. So anyway, well, at least that that maybe answers. Um, but it says uh, he had a stroke on his right side a few months ago. Doesn't make sense because uh, a few months. Well, wait a minute. It's been a f uh, since it's been a uh, month. I think. It, a month, I think. Yeah. I think we went into our break. And yeah. he, and coming out of it, December. he never called. What? He never called. So it would be something like the 25th of December or whatever to now. That's about a month and a half. You know, somebody could say that was a couple of months. Yeah. All right. But, you know, I mean, how bad a stroke was it? You know? Uh, but. Yeah, if he's totally out of it. I, I think what's happening is all the people where he lives 
are selling as shit, and that's why they're not uh, <laughs> yeah, that's answering, why they're the, not phone. answering <laughs> the phones. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, he well, look, he never sounded well. No. You know. But it, it goes to prove that cigarette smoking causes uh, heart disease, strokes, and... But it gives you a good, it gives you a good raspy voice. Do you know Nat Cole, who died of lung cancer, by the way, uh, Nat Cole um, had uh, smoked cigarettes all the time, and he and people said you got you got to quit smoking, and he said I won't quit smoking because that's what gives me this sound. I'm afraid that if I quit smoking, this mellow sound in my voice will go away because he kind of. A raspiness in his voice. All well. he needed was a Mackie board. Well, I mean, the thing is that, that that's uh, what killed him. But he didn't want to give up smoking because he was afraid it would affect the way his tonal quality, as it were. Yeah. So, didn't a yeah, lot of radio it's, personalities what? smoke because of that? Uh, I mean, no, that's not why we smoke. We smoke because we're sitting in a studio and bored out of our skulls. Yeah, well, that's you know. true, too. But I, I, I thought a lot of them just did it because of the voice. It did that to the voice. Well, I don't. I really yeah, don't. But know. that was that was also the era that everybody smoked anyway. So yeah, yeah. but I mean, uh, in in the case of Mike Allen, it didn't improve his voice. That's for damn oh, sure. No. no, you know, and you could tell he was a, a big smoker. I mean, well, what you were time. hearing was a uh, smoker, cough. a smoker's cough, right? Yeah, and he smoked while he was on the air and everything else. Yeah. I mean, how, yeah how does my, how does my voice that, sound to you, uh, Kevin? Is it fine? Is it sounding good? Yeah, 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 it sounded it, good. I was listening on YouTube there, and it, it, I could hear the changes, but it, it sounded good at the end. Oh, really? Oh, okay. You could hear what changes? The change when, when I, you were messing around with it, with the the reverb equalizer. and the, uh, the oh yeah, increase in the volume and the overmodulation, undermodulation, that sort of thing. Yeah, his equalizer, he changed his pitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once yeah. you got it laid laid out, it was fine. No, okay, good. So, uh, I what I did is I just turned off the equalizer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds fine now. But I'm not distorting or anything like that. All right. No, you're not okay. distorting. Because uh, whenever you do this kind of thing, you put in all the... Bit, Rob knows this. Whenever you put in all this new stuff, it, it, you, you got to tweak it. it. You got to tweak it, and you're tweaking it forever. You know, and you're hearing yep. things, and you're going, eh, I don't know about that. You know, I was using a, a an encoder to go out to the for the audio uh, that was a new one that the company made, and they were doing away with their old one. And then I listened to a playback of it on the air, and the recording had kind of this, the best way I can describe it was a phasing sound, you know, kind of a, I don't know how to describe it. It's hard to describe. But then I did it on NiceCast, their old product, and there was no problem. So there's something in their audio, in their new system. And the thing is, they're not audio people. They're engineers, no. they're programmers, and they go, ooh, you know, I was saying last night, they jerk off to everything they do, you know? Yeah. They like the circles on Skype. Yeah, they love the circles on Skype. Look, we've got circles. <laughs> oh, this is... Sound, it sounds good, move the, on. Yeah, this will beat out anything, you know? So anyway, so that, so, um, you know, um, uh so I, I had to work that out. I had to work this out and that. But it's tweaking little things, you know. It's yeah. tweaking the video. And then yesterday, I don't know why, but I interview, was interviewing Ronnie, and we did 25 minutes. And then I went to the recording, and it was all fucked, the video yeah. recording. So we well, went— Well, you're used to dealing with real equipment, too. This is kind of—this is— funky equipment well this isn't funky you know well I mean, you're you're dealing with your equipment going into funky shit what that sounds oh, like a song well yeah but what i'm what <laughs> i'm saying shit. is is there was no reason why the audio should have just you know the video should have not been working it's never failed on me never yeah. and then all of a sudden it failed on me yesterday so it's one thing or it's another you know and i just i just go uh, i'll be dead soon so it doesn't matter you know <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but today, girlfriend said to me, you know, Trump's going to get reelected. It's about time huh? you realize the, you and, know, the and, truth. And I looked I at going her, to. then I looked at her and I said, I don't give a rat's ass. And I really don't. Uh, apathy, that's the You next know, step. I want to, I just, 
in the next couple of years, because it's only going to affect me moderately, it's going to affect younger people more. It's going to affect some of you more than it's going to affect me. I'm retired and blah, 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 and all of that. But uh, just the sheer entertainment of seeing how much he can ruin this country is it's it's a it's a wonderful show to watch you know true and if if it can survive too huh and if it can survive well you know i said that when somebody said well we got trump now and i went well don't worry about it because this democracy will survive stop it phil obama wasn't terrible obama wasn't doing anything that was ruining this country he may have made some decisions you disagreed with but, I mean, he's not doing the kind of destruction that Donald Trump is doing. He overregulated the and, and, Oh, no, Phil, Phil. The banks Com- are starting to merge again. BBT Bank and uh, SunTrust Bank are, are going to be merging. Mm-hmm. Here we go. We're going to have a, another big, too big to fail or whatever it was called. And yeah. And we're he ain't going to stop it. He ain't yeah. going to stop it. But, all, yeah. but I, just, I just looked He'll at her and I went, I went, I don't give a shit. You know, I'm so yeah. tired of, of worrying about this. I said, if he gets reelected, then, you know, I said, the only thing that bothers me, I said, if I was younger, what I would do in that case, if he was reelected, is I would move out of the country. But, you know, at my age, you know, you're not about ready to pull up stakes and move to another country, you know. Uh, so the best I can do is just sit here and go, eh, you know, well, fuck it. to Vermont's like moving to another country. Well, you know, I, 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 it's just that at my age, you just don't think about moving to another country. When I, and when I was younger... Uh, even like under Nixon and things like that, I considered it from time to time because it was something feasible for you to do. You could pick up stakes. You didn't have that much. Everything went in the trunk of the car and you took off, you know? Uh, But, uh, I mean, I feel sorry for all the younger people who are coming up now. And I feel sorry for a lot of those middle-class people right now who supposedly uh, the so-called tax break is coming to bite them in the ass. Uh, yep. There are yep. people that last year got, I, there was this one family that got $10,000 back, and this year they're going to owe 10000 Well, I was thinking about it because if I was still working and not laid off, mm-hmm. I, I'd have been screwed. Really? How? Yeah, I, I would have been screwed. But now that I'm in the poverty level, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, I'm still screwed. You know, because I got a. At least I think anyway. I I got a. I got a working wife in between us. Even if I didn't have a working wife between us, we, you know, with the with the social security and things like that, we make more than what would be considered poverty level. Yeah, I I don't know yet, but I think I think I'm okay. You know, because of the tax thing, I don't (coughs) pay ten thousand in uh, property taxes. I think I'm under that and. You yeah, know, but, but I saw people who were saying, who are being really affected by this, that this so-called tax break turned out for the middle class, at least, to be a thing that came to bite them in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. You can't take the mortgage deduction anymore. No, yeah. that's... Yeah, you that's, can. Yeah. yeah, you can. You can? It's yeah. the property tax. No, I just did. You well, can't it's, a, property it's property tax. tax yeah, it's maxed at 10 grand. Mm. Oh, that's what it was, max to ten grand. Yeah. yeah. So, so, what, so what people that aren't paying as much property taxes, like on the on the East Coast, that they don't pay as much uh, mm-hmm. rent or whatever, right? I guess or or house payments, but they pay a lot in property taxes. They're going to get screwed, right? Mm-hmm. You I guys pay a lot of property the taxes East out there, Coast right? Are are high. And I think the property tax on the East Coast is much higher. In California, yeah. we had Proposition 13, which is the that 1% plus a few things that they tacked onto uh, it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've had that uh, since uh, GAN. Uh, the 70s. How, yeah, the 70s. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was early 70s or mid-70s. And uh, so our, our property taxes are actually kind of reasonable in California as in comparison to... Uh, other states. Am I wrong? But is, is it Florida? Is it Florida where they don't pay property taxes at all? No, they don't have. Uh, they don't have state, state tax. tax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, the point is that that a lot of and the other thing that I saw uh, today was that last year when the Congress gave these tax breaks, uh, all about something like seven hundred different companies were handing out bonuses. Mm-hmm. $1,000 bonuses. $1,000 bonuses. 
So wouldn't it was felt that they would be doing this every year. They're not doing it this year. <laughs> no, well, they, they, they did it. Their budget. Their they did it once. Yeah, their budget is now based your on the new. Too. It's based on the new paradigm. Uh, you know, which, uh, means last, that, which means that now what they're going to do is they're going to keep more profit and keep buying back their stock. So Trump gave away all of our wealth to the wealthy, and our grandkids, not mine because I don't have any, are going to pay for it. Yep. So again, it's a redistribution of wealth. No, that's what socialism is. But no, know, no, 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 Phil. We're talking. Capitalism. This is capitalism. Yeah, yeah. This is this redistribution of wealth is courtesy of capitalism, Phil. Yes. Right. That's why they want a seventy percent tax for the rich. And, and why are you suddenly so uh, uh, I, I'm, uh, on the case of socialism? You know, you never were before, but now since oh. our president so, is mentioning socialism. Right it's, it's the, the new system. mantra. It's, it's the new mantra, fair. Phil, it's, and you're new. Immoral. You're the. You're a it's puppet. It's immoral because it doesn't. Oh, allow Jesus. The Phil, 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 want, Phil, don't even, start. don't even start. Don't even start. Okay. Because well, you, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't it's, know it, what it, you're it, talking it, about. No, you're confusing no, socialism. You to begin with, last night you confused socialism with communism. Okay. It's the same thing. No, they're not. Oh, it's just a baby step towards communism. I see. There he goes. A baby step it's towards like capitalism communism. and democracy aren't the same thing. It, it, that's true. It, it, they have nothing to do with one another. That's right. Well, neither do socialism and communism. Oh, yeah. well, wait a minute. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, you, you, you know, a democracy is a form of ruling, uh, running a country, and the freedoms in, engendered in that. And communism and socialism are economic forms but really. they're also wait a minute let me finish the Phil they're economic forms in South America there was a wonderful South American leader by the name of Salvador Allende in Chile mm -hmm. and what he did is he was a uh, socialistic uh, had a socialistic uh, rather a communistic democracy which is absolutely possible but the Americans didn't want the Americans to know that you could have a communist democracy and so they went down there we went down there and overthrew him and put in Pinochet who turned out to be one of the worst dictators in the history of South America well you know the, these programs work for about 20 years and uh, they work as long as the Americans are paying for their military as soon as you know, you, you get these homogeneous uh, 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 countries. Well, what are you talking about, Phil? It's, it's capitalism that survives under under military need. Uh, uh, Social uh, Security's worked for over eighty years. Yeah, isn't that and what FDR why? started to uh, stop communism in the U.S.? Yeah. Well, yes, it was. The military, it the military is socialism. Military yep. socialism. Well, there's a lot of things that are socialism that uh, you know your family is socialism. Your your wife and husband they can no, buy no, their no, salary. No, 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 Phil, no, no, Phil, no. you don't you don't know what socialism <laughs> is. You have no concept. Yes, I do. It's but it's Phil. an unfair, uh, immoral uh, a system of of uh, redistribution of wealth. That's what it is. No, but you're, you're throwing in terms like immoral, and that's not part of the description. Well, it is for me. It's yeah, it is for you Fox because you you don't know what it's all about. Oh, okay. So tell me I don't know what it's all about. You don't know what it's That's all about. You have no concept. You think com communism and socialism are almost the same, and they're not. Yes. To begin uh, with, to begin with, I, if, if you want to say is, communism is a terrible system, I will tell you that it is. Yes, I would agree with you 100%. Well, but socialism, I would love to see this country be a socialist country. And, and with with communism, you have the government ownership. We're not talking of, about communism. I, We're talking I, about well, socialism, Phil. But with socialism, many times you have uh, a, a, the, the people that uh, work a, at a certain thing own the company. Uh, and, but, you know, what they, somebody had to start it, somebody had to invest in it, and it's a redistribution well, of wealth. It, 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 the, well, it, let me say this. Uh, in socialism, I think the term, the means of production uh, 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 are... are uh, uh, the purview of the of the people who because right. you, you have people running companies and they're they're building the cars and so on and they are making a fraction a fraction of what the people at the top of the company are making 
And that's wrong. Right. And that's wrong. Right. Uh, no, uh, Akira, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, Akira, uh, whoever, who was who started Sony and was one of the richest men in the world, said he yeah, never he took, took more He never took more than $300,000 a year in salary because he felt that the leader of a company should not make more than, say, five times, six times what the average worker in his company makes. Right. Yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, that anything to do anything else is immoral. Well, uh, the thing is, is that with risk. Oh, the means of production. The, the means of production yeah, should but, belong but, to the people. Yeah. But if that's the case, risk. Okay, so if you start a business, I agree, you're putting risk in. But what about these CEOs that uh, get these jobs with these great parachutes? There's no risk mm -hmm. there. Uh, like Alex says, that's a what aboutism. No, it isn't. No, a, no, that's no, not a what about ism. That's not a what about ism at, at all, Phil. Yeah, that's not a what about ism. You know, if we're you invest, we're talking about the exact same thing here. We're not talking about right, I look, didn't I didn't reflect back on right. something else. If um, you let me let me end. If you invest in a company, uh, you can lose your investment. Right, if someone okay. is working in a company and they're paid to do a job, and the job goes away. They lose their job. They can get another one, but they're not on the hook for the investment uh, and uh, and capital that has to create the company. Usually, uh, usually when companies, companies go belly today, up, they belly up the people who head those companies, and they're not small people like you, Phil, who just has a small little company and a bunch of people, a couple of people working for them. These are people who have massive corporations, and when they fail, they walk away with billions of dollars. Right. Even though their company failed, uh, uh, you know, we read about these guys who when uh, a company went belly up, he walked away with, you know, a billion dollars. And you go, what? You know, you, you, you fucked over this company and you get rewarded for that? The term golden parachute, we hear it all the time. Right. Well, that's, that's not uh, right either. I think that people's compensation should be based on their productivity. And if you lose money, well, you, here's the, company, the here's the argument well, for the, here's the argument here's the argument for the coming. here's the argument for the golden parachute. You're somebody like go oh, I don't know Les, yeah, Les Moonves. Moonves, who's at one company, and then CBS wants him, and he has to leave that company where he has a solid job to go to this other company where well, who knows what's going to happen, and so he uh, he wants a golden parachute in case they let him go. That's the reason why some golden parachutes exist. Others exist. Uh, who was it? Uh, the guy who's the head of iHeartRadio. Um, what's his name? I don't know. I'm trying to remember his name now because I, I knew him years ago. He started MTV. Sam Hart. Uh, uh, oh, uh, I know who you're talking yeah, about. The Bob, Pittman? Bob Pittman. Uh, Bob Pittman, um, I think, has a thing in his contract that if, uh, if the company went belly up, he was going to walk away with hundreds of millions of dollars. And you're going, he gets hundreds of millions of dollars for not doing the right thing. You know, he is the head of the company, after all. He's the guy who should be responsible if it fails. Yeah. Didn't the uh, gal from Fox that went over to NBC, Kelly, uh, uh, what Megan was her name? Kelly. Megan, Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly. Yeah. Uh, did she come away with like $24 million? Yep, yeah. yeah. because they did. She, she had a contract. And the she contract. Got her entire contract. Yeah. The contract had to be. Uh, had to be fulfilled, as it were, you know. Yeah, that in a way is different from business because. Well, Alex had know, that. I mean, no, you know, I, I see that's a little different than than executives and companies will get golden parachutes, in my opinion, because you you have a you know. A, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Hold on a second. A I contract, have a an entertainer. Yeah, somebody yeah, they're not who, the head of the chain. Yeah, they're uh, you know. And their careers are really fragile. Yeah. And yeah. it's like baseball players or football players, well, right? Well, in, in my case, I walked away. Uh, they had to pay me, what was it? For a year and a half? They had to pay me some, some for a year and a half. Or no, yeah, 14 months, something like that, a year and a half. Uh, so when, like I, when, they, when, when I left at, uh, at uh, Live 105 in San Francisco. But that's because they wanted out of the contract and they had to pay the, oh, yeah. the rest of it. Now, they, you know, part of the reason why they don't mind paying off the rest of it is if I, if I suddenly wound up getting another job somewhere, yeah. then the difference in price they could take off of their, what they owe me. 
But, you know, I mean, they had a contract with me and they had to fulfill it. Oh, uh, that's yeah. the different thing altogether than golden yeah. parachutes and whatever. But uh, all I'm saying is uh, I uh, have been a believer that the means of production should belong to the people. You know, uh, uh, that, that the companies that don't return a large portion of their profit to their people who work for them are being immoral. Well, I believe, on the other hand, that... The, what, that what's immoral? Wait a minute, what, Rob, what's immoral? Exactly what you said. That is, because Phil keeps saying that socialism is immoral. What right. you just said is immoral. Wh what? Right. What you just said about uh, about the you know companies not returning. Oh, not returning. Okay. In yes, other words, you that's, agree. That's you agreed immoral. with what I, I was saying. Agree with you. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. You know, I I, be I belong to a group called uh, a co-op. Come on, we're, we're no, uh, no a co-op. I own a share of the co-op, and they return profits to me as well as the other hundreds of people that own shares in it. And uh, th this, but this is not socialism. This is uh, a group of investors that, that uh, invested and created uh, an entity that uh, pays them back. But I have, I have a stake in that entity. I paid to have a stake in that entity. Mm -hmm. When somebody else works for a company, they're yeah. being paid for their time. And they're and and they're being paid for their uh, expertise. Yes, but being, but they're being paid, not that's capitalism. No, it's but they're not they're not getting bonuses. They're not getting a share in the company. That. I mean, uh, uh, several companies in recent years have gone to where the uh, the people who work there are the shareholders. They own the company as well. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. And those companies are typically very successful. Yes, because people and really. You want take you want to know care. one of them that you see every day? UPS. Yeah. It's owned by the employees. Yeah, the employees are the stockholders. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's so, you could say that's socialism. I think the Green Bay Packers are like that. Are they? Yeah. Uh, they are. They're, they're, yeah, they're owned by. Um, they're owned by the the fans. The yeah. fans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You buy stock when you buy. But, when you but go to those I games. mean, uh, I I I think that what we're saying here is why should companies uh, make billions and only return millions back to the very people on whose backs that company was they, built? They do return it. They return it to their shareholders. No, they oh, no. Oh, the, 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 you mean the shareholders? Fans. Those are the people who do nothing. They do they, nothing. They made an investment. No, they do are, nothing. Are you saying to people that have a retirement that make an investment in a company and they live off that uh, return? That's uh, for their retirement. Very minor amount. Very nothing? minor amount of the people out there who collect the proceeds off of these things. The main people, people. Yeah, go ahead, Rob. How many people making fifteen dollars an hour going out buying any stock? It's not the fifteen dollar an hour people, but it's the right. people who worked all their lives, yeah, saved, sure. saved, invested, had a four hundred one k Roth IRA, whatever it is, and they took that money. How about those people who could never afford it because they were working for a corporation that didn't pay them enough of a yeah. decent wage that they could invest in stocks? And a lot of corporations gave them what? stocks. You even got serious stock. Yeah, you know for what? for about for about two years until they started getting cheap as fuck. You know and what? It's when foolish. When companies go down, shareholders don't get paid back. They lose. Right. The greediness so, of these companies is actually was, foolish because if you share the wealth with people, people are going to spend the money you give them. That's called uh, getting mugged. That that's 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 uh, that is the most immoral thing I can think of. If you got three people in a room, one guy has a hundred dollars, and the other two guys want it, and they beat them up to get it. Then uh, that's, no, that's no, immoral. No, no, no. What am no, I saying? I'm saying that it pay people that pay like like American companies used to be, where they took stock in their employees, where they looked out for their employees, and their employees looked out for them. That's uh, when things were good in this country. If, when, you, if, when when Donald Trump talks about making America great again, the only thing I can think of that makes any sense in that slogan is when people had jobs that they could go to every day, and he didn't have to be a college graduate, and you didn't have to be a lawyer or a doctor or an attorney, but you could get a job that was – maybe you uh, delivered bread. Well, maybe I, you I, were – I, we I were worked sold for Ford, out. and I was – 
damn proud of it. Or I worked for Chevy and I'm damn proud of it. Or I worked for USS well, Steel I, and I'm damn proud of it. Yeah, That's the it way it was. It got to the point where people wanted what other people had and they didn't want to work for it. No, that's uh, I, I disagree no, with no, that. No, no, no. That's I ridiculous. have friends. I have a guy that I, I worked with for years who worked on Long Island when Grumman was uh, only on Long Island before it was Northrop Grumman. That was a killer, kick-ass co uh, company. Who, I mean, those people who got those Grumman jobs, they lived very nicely on Long Island. They they were paid very well. They were treated very well. They were loyal. Employees. Yep. What did, they what wanted did their Grumman kids make? to work there. They wanted what, their what friends did, to work there. What did there. Grumman make? Airplanes. And what buses. else? They made uh, airplanes, buses. Uh, I don't really Wasn't know. Wasn't it what. a military? Uh, yeah, uh, whatever. Thing. They were they, they were you know, happy to work there. They were making the tanks. Point. They were making. They, they also uh, made uh, they also made airliners and things like that too. Well, I yeah, they yeah. also they were so they, uh, they built uh, airplanes. You know, and during the, the point during is that this was a great company that once it merged with Northrop, it became an Americanized company and everybody everything dried up. The corporations became pyramids. Yes. Yeah. It's happening yeah. again with these. And the lower I, guy gets screwed, and the higher guy walks away with the money. Right. That, and the that, more it was you always take that, that way. Cash, no, it wasn't. No, no. Yeah, no, it, it was You know, they're called Ponzi schemes. That's and, right. And, and it and, started. And, and, and it's greed. It's greed that creates uh, the ability for a Ponzi scheme to work. See, you're, you're now you're talking right. But it's not the greed of the guy at the top. It's the greed of the guy at Phil, the bottom. Phil, all, I, all I'm oh, saying. No. Uh, uh, no. No, you're well, not, you're he, you're, he knows you're, he's going to get screwed. You almost and he got does it, it anyway. Bill. You almost got it. You no, almost he knows got he's going to get screwed, but he does it anyway. It, it, it's like the story of the scorpion and the frog. You know, no, you, he you know, know it's going to get. Screwed, you're he knows get he has to eat, so he goes to work, and he still gets screwed. Yes, but the guy at the top continues to screw Here, him. Here's a guy. There are people who pursue the American dream, and they spend all their life. Working at jobs that, uh, you know, they were told you, you work hard, life's going to be is going to reward you if you work hard. Right. So he so he works hard, and then on he you know and he never manages to get ahead. He only stays right where he can. He doesn't make enough that he just he spends everything that he makes, and he's not being extravagant or anything else. And uh, years later, when he's lying on his deathbed, he goes. Why the fuck didn't I do something else? You know, why was I always in a position where I was making other people rich, but nobody made me rich for the I effort? Don't it, but I don't know that anybody is saying, you know, back in the day, in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, I don't think anybody was saying they wanted to be rich. I think people just wanted, and that's how I feel. I, I just want to be comfortable, earn a yeah. living. I'm not striving to be rich. It used to be you got a job with a company and you knew that you were going to be taken care of by that company. That company looked out for you. You looked out for that company. Well, you know, you the, question is, what, the question is, what the question is, when we, when we, we'll say, uh, yes, Charles, what were you saying? Uh, no, he, no. Still I said the, the union screwed, screwed that up. Uh, up. No, the union. So, so to some degree, you're right, Phil, to some, to some degree, and I'm, working in the broadcast business in New York, mm -hmm. I know horror stories about the New York name it unions at the networks and the things that went on. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's a broken system. That means like every other system, it needs to be tweaked and fixed, not yep. thrown out. Yep. Believe me, um, believe it or not, Phil, it, we wouldn't have 40 hour work weeks if it weren't for right. the unions. Well, for the unions. Oh, there, there are wouldn't some even have things weekends. that are good, but I don't think... Most people don't work 40 hours. They sit around the cooler talking about shit for about 10 of those You know, hours. you make assumptions, Phil, for the sake of argument that may not no. be true. All right? No, I, I have a. I, I now have cameras in my store, well, and I can see. Well, maybe do. you got some lousy fucking employees, but, you know. We all do. Yeah, because if we had good ones, our economy would be stronger. No, they're no. The good production they of the be. workers has gone up and up and up and up, but their salary is is stagnant. The yeah, morality goes down. Here, here's well, my question. Uh, my my question, Phil. That's true. What do you think is socialism? I mean, what to you is uh, uh, what's? The, uh, don't tell me about the evils of socialism, okay. but tell me something that's socialistic 
that's bad. Okay, I believe that socialism, if you... No, I didn't ask that question, question, Phil. You're not answering the question. Go well, answer my question. Bad. I think it's a redistribution no, no, of wealth. No, no, Phil, no, Phil, I, I, I didn't thing. say that. I said, Phil, name something socialistic and tell me why it's bad. Yeah. Uh, I would say unions. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, they are corrupt uh, for the most part. All of them are corrupt? As far as I got news for you, I work for, I have a union, uh, SAG-AFTRA, uh, and uh, these people are not corrupt in the least. Yeah, well, uh, they're not based in New York. Well, yes, they are. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Uh, based in New mafia, York and, and, and Hollywood. Yeah, well, uh, the, the mafia has infiltrated. Oh, I see. Unions. The mafia is my in my union, Phil? Probably. Uh, I would imagine so. You're, you're making assumptions here that aren't true. No, my union is, is if anything, we're the uh, droopy dogs of, of well, unions. We're like, the, well, if you uh, if you, if, 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 if the Carpenters and Joiners Union, for instance, in New York, oh, it's well, all mobbed up. Well, I don't think it, that was the case anymore. And, and even uh, even the teachers union was mobbed up. No, it wasn't. I don't. Yeah, no, it who's wasn't. The guy that no. lived in White Plains. Now, uh, you're talking about uh, um, uh, what's his name? Yeah, he wasn't mobbed. Yeah. He wasn't mobbed. Oh yeah, there, no, he wasn't. He was definitely mobbed up. Who, he lived down the street from my temple. Yeah, uh, but he wasn't. And he he wasn't. lived over by Allen Funt. Uh, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying right to remember. Allen I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, his his name is a joke in a Woody Allen film. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the, the city was in the sixties. Yeah, I'm trying to remember his name. He was the head of the of the union, and yeah, it, was, no, he yeah. wasn't. He wasn't mob at all. You didn't like him because he he took a tough stand and got the teachers some money. Nah, nah. There was so much mob no, action. No, and, Phil, you know, Phil, I Phil, how do you know? How, how do you know kid? this? Were because you a I teacher? Were, were you doing? a teacher? When they'd come to my father's parking lot with shotguns, I you know. Wait, I wait, what did your father do for a living? He was a contractor, a flooring contractor. All righty, we, we're talking about a different business. We're not talking about the fucking teachers' union. Yeah, but that guy, uh, uh, whatever his name was, uh, was definitely mobbed up. Uh, no, you know, he wasn't. I, I, I remember. Who, I remember his story, and I remember that he wasn't mobbed up, Phil. They were all mobbed up. No, oh, Jesus. You know, you, you make these, these rash yeah, yeah, generalizations. The, the, guy lived, the guy lived a couple Phil, away from Phil, Alan Phil, Funk. Phil, to begin with, unions, I hate to tell you this, are not really socialistic. Okay? They are, they are, uh, they are what we call uh, 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 collective, bargaining. collective bargaining. But it's yeah. not socialism. And I asked you the question, tell me something that's socialistic that's bad. Well, it's bad when they take what you got no, and they give uh, it to other people. Uh, oh, Phil, you're not answering That's my question. Bad. I'm saying name That's what the something. Department does. Something. Right. Is it, okay. Is, is, the the police is the police department is the police department bad? Is the police department bad, Phil? No. No. Well, it's socialistic. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's, we all pay for it. Service. We we all pay for it, and we get the service of the police as a communal thing. No, yes, you pay, you pay general taxes, and the police department. Oh, that's it's, but it's it's, the roads, it, it's socialistic, the Phil. It's socialistic because we're putting into this pot and we're taking out of the pot and we're you having. Can't have, it's not all black and white. For the be, you for, you with know, you, it is on everything else. Yes, Charlene yeah, just joined us. Charlene's Charlene's got her hand up. Is it Shanker? Albert yeah. Shanker. Albert Shanker. Yeah. 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 When you said Woody Allen made a joke out of it, that's how it came out. Yeah, I think oh, you good. said that uh, 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 he, he dies show. and he comes back, you know, he's, he, 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 uh, centuries later, uh, he's defrosted or whatever, and they say, well, you know, we, this thing, oh, New York, back in those days, yeah, when the city was taken over by Albert Shanker oh. or something like that. It's a line. Uh, and everybody in the theater laughed because Super, Albert Shanker. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I remember him, you know, in in the area. Yeah, so that made him a mobster. Was your father a mobster? He had to pay to the mobsters. If you if you wanted to work, you had to pay. Well, in New York was one of those towns where the mob really had uh, mob rule uh, on a lot of things. I mean, anything that moved down the street of New York was controlled by the mob. Now, as to whether the union was mob controlled or not, but the but the even means, the city was the trucks were. 
you know. Yeah, you know, uh, my one of my father's biggest accounts was the Port of New York. Mm -hmm. uh, so we put the carpet in the original World Trade Center when they built it. Mm -hmm. We uh, did um, uh, the, like Greek line ships when the ships would come into the port. Uh, we'd pull the carpet out and start uh, putting it in. Uh, and if we weren't done, we went to Bermuda and then they flew us back. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the thing is, uh, that was all pay to play. Uh, I remember okay, okay, but you're, you're taking us away from the question I asked you, which I still haven't gotten an answer from you. It's on. immoral. No, that's not the question. Uh, Rob, what was the question I asked? The question is pick some socialistic program and say what's wrong with it. Food stamps. What's wrong with it? Uh, it, it cripples uh, uh, people and they stay on food stamps their whole life and generations. Welfare is another uh, socialistic program. How would you how would you solve people. how would you solve the problem of families that can't feed themselves? Well, families that can't Walmart. feed themselves, you you work with them, you give them education, uh, and, Phil, and you Phil. Uh, isn't that socialistic? Phil. Yeah, that is socialistic. Now that you mention it. You're making an investment so that they can then support themselves. Mm -hmm. You're right. really, you're really living in that, a dream world, that's Phil. Socialistic. Well, so what? Socialistic. You well, know, there are some things that are good and some things that are bad. And I feel there is nothing wrong, protect... Phil. There's nothing wrong with food stamps. Uh, food stamps, in and of themselves, feed people, especially the biggest recipients of the of the food stamps and of the good that food stamps people. does are children. Okay, so, uh, me, and older ask, people. So yeah. what you pick on when you when you say when you pick a program is all of the all of the things that are wrong with a program. Not necessarily. All, there are well, good things with certain programs, things about, but, but nothing's black or white. You know, there's I'm a, it's a is, balance. But what I'm saying is, you chose food stamps, and you said that it's bad because of this. When you you chose welfare, you said it's bad because of this, right? right. But those programs are designed and do help people. Who need when my when my when my fa when my father was a little boy, they were on government peanut butter and government right. cheese because there was no work, there was no money. Was I that understand. bad? No. My but, father didn't wind but, up on but welfare. But did your father end up being trapped by that system no, generation not, not after generation? Yeah, well, you're not you're saying there are many people that welfare. are. But, but, well, so, first of all, first of all, uh, Charlene uh, has Cor her. Corbin's on the chat there, and he says he was on food stamps for a year in 2008, and he needed it for 200 bucks a month for when he was unemployment because he got laid off. Good. Okay, Charlene, Charlene has her hand. Has Charlene now. had her hand up. Now. Charlene has her hand up, Phil. Charlene has her hand up, Phil. All right. Just keep your uh, eye on the screen and see when somebody's got their hand up. Yes, Charlene. What? When Rob said that about his family. I've always heard this thing that Ronald Reagan was so weird. His son wrote a booklet, like, Expose Ronald sure. Reagan. And uh, Ronald Reagan, when he was a kid, they were on food stamps and welfare and everything because they needed it. But later on, when he became president, he's the one that, like, started that heavy push to get everybody off welfare, get everybody off food stamps. I don't think he was on welfare. He, he was, he was the head of the... Actors Union. He had a, a Phil. We're not talking kid. about when he was an adult. We're talking about when he was a child. Ronald Reagan. That's what or she's saying. No, she said his son was, uh, and the, the family son was. Thought on. it was so odd that he had used no. all this, and he knew it because I guess you know he grew up in that family, but he couldn't understand how his father turned against things like that because it had helped him as a child. You don't see uh, uh, tons of families being trapped year after year. You decade. know why they're trapped, Phil? They're trapped. They are trapped by virtue of the way it is administered. And that's uh, let me. Uh, no, oh, Phil, no, it isn't. In fact, it's kind of capitalism. It, it's people who don't understand the poor and how to extricate them from that situation while at the same time giving them food, giving them money to live on. And what they do is, if you get up to a certain point, they pull the rug out from underneath you, and now you're making less and getting less food than you had the other way. So it's that there isn't, there isn't a system to, to get people off of it without them having to pay a large penalty by doing so. There's a big gap between it. And, yeah. and it's to the advantage You have no idea, Phil, of, because you don't have a heart for this sort of thing. You don't understand what it's, it does. It's to the advantage of 
certain political groups to entrap these people. So that Yes, and you know who those political groups are? Capitalists, capitalists, yeah. who like to trap the American public into a place where they are subservient to the capitalistic system and to them making money. That's, that's bullshit. And then they can blame it on the Well, Democrats. it's easy to say it's bullshit, but it's true, Phil. No, it's easy. It's anybody just disagree easy with what I just, anybody disagree with what I just said? I, yeah, I disagree nope. with it. Yeah. You know. You know, uh, it's easy. You, you, you blame the capitalists like, uh, you know, like, you know, they're, they're doing such Phil, a bad thing. Phil, to, to Phil, work Phil, Phil. And, and take risks. Phil, the ultimate end, if we take capitalism and we take it to an extreme, is pure and utter greed. All right. Well, and wait a minute. And we are we are entering that period of time where the very rich have a lot, and they are a small amount. They, 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 they let me let me finish. The the rich own uh, the largest amount of money in this society, and to the detriment of all the rest of us who don't. And that is called greed. And that kind of economy is doomed to failure. I believe that the top uh, 10% pay 90% of the tax burden. Well, they oh, own ninety percent of the money, so. Well, that's they, and, but we're reaping. Unfortunately, that's not true, Phil. They don't pay ninety. percent They don't pay ninety no, percent. Where do you they get that figure, Phil? Go look money. it up. Get it for us. Find it. Uh, it's uh, you don't have enough time, but uh, uh, no, you don't have enough time because you're not going to find it, Phil. You're, you're going to find that 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 the, the, the it, it's not the percentage. The, it's what, the it, amount of money the, that's the, being the fact given is to the that the top. I think it was they said something like the top three percent of yeah. of money own uh, money people in this country own more money than the entire entire uh, for, uh what is it rest of the population in right, this country but combined they're paying for the services that the uh, other 90 No no it's getting. greed what are these people doing with their billions of dollars Phil who needs a billion dollars Oh well, I guess guys like uh, 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 Microsoft and Berkshire No Apple those are companies those are companies Phil oh, okay. those are not so individuals about Gates and we're talking about uh, Gates. Uh, uh, Gates. Warren Gates, a great uh, believer in socialism. He's trying to give his money away. Yep. Right. Warren Buffett. So and he, and Warren Buffett. Bu Warren. Two thousand billionaires. That's it. There's just two thousand of them. So oh. you know, uh, and some of them don't give away anything. Phil. Uh, Phil. I don't know what the Larry, fact is. Uh, the fact uh, is, uh, 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 means production should belong to the people. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I, I, yeah, you know, it's easy for you to say. I, whether you do it through stock or, or some other method. But the people who work should get recompensed for the fact. Because who makes these companies great? They the do. people they, they who build the cars, who build the buildings, who, who build Capitalism. all this stuff. And they do Capitalism. it with their sweat. Right. You know, Capitalism meanwhile, these like assholes people. who are making the billions of dollars sit there in their high towers and just uh, okay. have their feet but up on the table all day. What's wrong with it? Because it, all it is is because I it give you this. What has it ever got? What it is that. has it ever gotten you, Phil, except a big Behringer board? <laughs> they got it for you. <laughs> I got a personas now. No. Yeah. Tough. <laughs> you know, but with capitalism, it's I agree to give you something that I earned. To get something. Uh, from, oh, thanks from for you. doing me the favor. But now, I, through my sweat and blood, I'm building the product that you're selling. And without me, you're going to have nothing to sell. And yet, you don't give me but, shit. Yes, but without Rob. The guy yes, that Rob. The company, Rob. You got nothing to build. Rob. So, from this is from uh, Wikipedia. Half of the world's net wealth belongs mm -hmm. to the top one percent. Top 10% of adults hold 85%, while the bottom 90% hold the remaining 15% of the world's wealth. The top 30% of adults hold 90%, 97% of the wealth. Does that make sense? Well, they're also paying 97% of the services. Uh, that everybody else is getting. See, that's paying. not true because of these giant tax cuts. You, they get, they you also act. Kids. You also yeah. act. You know what happens is they gave these tax cuts out, saying, "Well, that means that companies will then have money to hire more people and to do more and stuff." They have. You know they, they haven't. Have. No, no, they, they haven't, the Phil. They did a. They did right a survey. Now. They did a we're survey full, a while full, back, full, Phil. They, they did a survey a while. Phil, shut up and learn. Shut up and learn. Shut up and learn. Shut up and learn. Without the tax cuts. 
not necessarily. That, 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 that they said, well, then they will, they'll, they'll use that money and blah, blah, blah. No, they won't. They sit there and they squat on it. They're buying their stocks back is what they're doing with it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Artificially inflating the economy by buying back their stocks. Right. Well, we're going through a tough time right now. Our economy is is taking a swing the other way uh, because of what's going on with China and and, and so oh, forth. But wait but a minute. Still, According to Donald Trump, uh, it's doing better than it ever has. Well, and it, according it has, to Donald Trump, by the way, he is right now down. building that wall. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't know. Uh, what, you know, it's somebody with an erector set or something sitting on the border uh, building a little thing. Well, it's putting people to work. What do you got to What do you mean? They're not there's not one iota of work being done on a wall, Phil. That's because the Congress is stalling uh, funding. No, he yeah. says they're, they're building it right. No, he says they're building it right now and they it's went out and looked and said, "Where are you building this fucking he wall?" Look in the right place. Huh? What what right, Rob? He's lying. Like He's lying. Yeah. Well, we'll see. He's going to get a beautiful wall. Point He's going to get 1.3 billion with this uh, current thing to keep the uh, government open, I believe. So, did I hear something about him uh, doing the emergency thing and getting uh, more money? So he's going to take it from the military. You know he said he was going to do is take the uh, emergency funds from California. So if we ever blow up or have an <laughs> earthquake and all our shit blows up, and we won't have nothing. Yeah. Well, so, Gavin Newsom well, finally figured that out. And he eliminated the, the, the bullet train or whatever. Uh, yeah, half of it. Yeah. So, Phil, here's the great deal that your president made, this guy who's the this amazing dealer. The art of the deal. Mm -hmm. they, the Congress <laughs> was ready to give him $25 billion. He settled yeah. for $1.6 Yeah, but there yeah. were some other things tagged on oh, to $25 billion. Oh, 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 Was oh. it DACA or something no, else? They he said wanted... $1.7, and then they, he decided to take $1.3, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, he, ta was... he talked them down to $1.3. Yeah, he talked them down <laughs> to $1.3. <laughs> no, no, no. Take I want $14 billion from El Chapo. He's going he's gonna, to uh, annex that money. Uh, that Al he's going to make Chapo pay for the wall. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. Hey, why don't you go to him and get the money? And he's not even Mexican. Who, Chapo? Yeah, isn't he Guatemalan or, or yeah. Colombian? Just dig up one of his tunnels. It's probably in there. He's, he's yeah. involved with the Medi Well, what happens is, is you can get El Chapo to pay for the wall, and then he can dig under it to bring the right. drugs yeah. in. Yeah. There you go. Well, I don't think El Chapo's going anywhere uh, this year. Uh, oh, he's happy because he doesn't want to be in a Mexican prison. By the way, you know, I just read is really happy in prison. Uh, Bill Cosby. Uh, Bill Cosby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They say he's, he's getting along fine with everybody. He looks upon it as a life experience. And they say he could not be happier. And that he, he loves being the teacher to all these other uh, inmates, and they love him because, you know, he's, he's Fat Albert, you know. You know, OJ I was thinking well the other day, too. I was just looking at yeah. the. The pictures. That, you know who El Chapo looks like? Who? Let me see here. Uh, wait a minute. I, 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 oh, <laughs> wait. Uh, you got it. Uh, 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 wait a minute. Uh, I'm a little slow on the uptake. Who, who does he look like? Who does he look like? From Dubai. Oh, yeah. Oh. Bree. He looks like. He, are you saying he looks like Bree? Like Bree. Wait till he calls in again. We'll oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Bree is probably having a cat fit. No, it is El Chapo. You know, you know what that means, Chapo, right? El Chapo. It's shorty. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, He's probably watching right now, cringing. That, it, it, that's how he fit in the tunnel. <laughs> I was going. Oh, he, he that looks like Bree. Listen, that tunnel, one tunnel he had that uh, that he escaped through. He actually had a uh, motorcycle. Really? Yeah, that they yeah, had there rail. waiting for him so he could zip through the tunnel. Yeah, it was on rails. Yeah. Anyway, hey, yeah, that's uh, that de designed that whole damn tunnel. That's our theme song uh, 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 going like crazy. Uh, I want to. I want to thank yeah, you. I think he did. What? Yeah, he's not moving. Yeah. What? The music stopped playing. Yeah. I uh -oh. hope he didn't pull a Mike Allen. <laughs> what do you mean the music? I hate say that. You don't hear the music? Right. Well, no. thanks, thanks, thanks for that ear stuff, Phil. Uh, that have you used it? Wait a minute. Are you, are you, are you, do you hear the music? Wait a minute. What happened? Oh, what do you know? We, we, we lost them all. Something went wrong with Skype. Okay, well, 
Hey, it was the end of the show. It was a good time for Skype to kill itself. Uh, anyway, oh, what the hell happened to everybody? I don't know. They just they just disappeared. Oh well. Uh, they said they said they said they didn't hear the music any longer, and then something went wrong. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, hey, thanks everybody for being with us. Thanks to our uh, our citizen panel for being with us tonight. Uh, uh, next is Jack Bishop and the intersection. And um, uh, I, I'm trying to remember everybody who was there. Rob Alfano, Phil Meyer, um, uh, Kevin, uh, Charlie Wallace, and Charlene Martinez. Hey, I got them all. My memories. I still got it. I still got it. Anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. I, I, all of a sudden, Skype went. <laughs> it just farted. Anyway, see you tomorrow night. Uh, 10 o'clock. Eastern time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>